Hey, good evening, and welcome to what we're going to call Follow. And I'm so thankful for you uh, being willing to watch online. And uh, thank you so much for wanting to connect this way. Would you do me a favor in the um, comment section? Would you just let me know that you're watching? Um, and uh, I'd love to be able to interact with you um, and uh, be able to uh, answer any questions you might have or just be able to, to interact with comments that you make, that sort of thing. Um, what is follow? Follow is all about what 1 Corinthians 11 1 says, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul is the one that's writing it. He's not writing, telling them to follow after him, mimic him, be like Paul. I'm great. You're, you're need, you need to step up and be like me. No, no. He's saying, follow me as I, as we follow Christ. So what is follow all about? Follow is all about learning to follow Christ, to mimic Christ, to live after Christ, to let Christ's life impact our lives so that we can impact others' lives for, for Christ. And so it's about really, what does it mean to be a disciple maker? Not just a, a disciple, but a disciple maker. Um, because that's what we're supposed to be, right? I mean, Matthew 28, Jesus says, go and make disciples. So, so you and I are called to make disciples, not just be a disciple. I think sometimes that, that when we, we read that or we hear that being preached or we hear that being taught, we hear, go and be a disciple. Well, in order to be a disciple, you need to be making disciples. And you need to be making disciples who are making disciples. Because if we're not making disciples, then what are we doing? But what are, what are we doing as the church? What are we doing as individuals? If we're not making disciples who are following Christ, then, then, then what success is there really? Because that's what Jesus called, called us to do, commanded us to do, commissioned us to do, is go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them, baptizing them. Why? Because that's what continues to see this thing continue to grow and multiply is people making disciples of Jesus. That's what Jesus did. Jesus poured his life into some who then poured their life into some who poured their life into some and that continued to multiply and continue to multiply until we're here, you and me. And we need to continue that on. So follow me as I follow Christ, as we follow Christ. That's what follow is all about. And some of the things that we're going to do with follow, um, you know, you're, you're at home or you're watching somewhere online and you're going, how, how can I do this thing that you're asking me to do? How can I do this? Um, and, and practice it as your guys are, are you, you're practicing it and, and you're meeting with, uh, yes, I'm tonight I'm meeting with a group um, of people um, here at the church and uh, you're watching online. But, but that doesn't mean that you can't do the same things that I'm asking them to do. So follow. It's not just a Bible study. It's not a service. It is an opportunity for you to learn from Jesus' life, apply it to your life, and make disciples. And you know what? Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. And I want to encourage you that as we begin this process, I, I don't know all how it's going to all how it's going to shake out. This is new to me too. This is different to me, different way of thinking, different way of, of, of looking at and thinking about ministry and thinking about what I do with my time and thinking about who I'm investing in and, and that kind of thing. Jesus was super intentional about that. I mean, he, he went and he prayed all night long and asked God to give him guidance before he went and he talked to anybody about following him. And then he went to those 11 guys and uh, 12 guys and said, come, follow me. And 
them, they left their nets and they left their livelihoods and they went and they followed Jesus. And you and I are here today because, because they followed. And so imagine that. Imagine who will, whose life will be changed as a result of you intentionally investing in the life of another. And so as we think about following, as we think about this whole thing of, of follow, there are going to be some things that we're going to do that, that uh, are very intentional. And, and what it's about is trying to help us think a little bit differently, help us maybe practice some things differently. There may be things that, that we do that you're like, man, I do this already. Yeah. But maybe you haven't really thought about it. So just a little something different. Um, and again, I'm excited about where it's going to go and what it's going to do and how this is going to impact lives. Um, I've already begun to implement some of this in, in my family um, and our time with our kids and uh, Daisha and I's time together. And uh, it's been exciting. We've had some really cool conversations um, uh, about uh, different things that revolve around Jesus' life and his ministry and how those impact and how those fit and how those change in, in our lives and, and how we live those out. So some of the things that we've done in the past, um, we're going to continue. Like, for instance, asking you to be praying for people um, and uh, ask that you would continue to lift up different individuals. Um, a, a note of praise. We prayed on Sunday for Ken Tabor. Um, he had a test and it came back all clear. That is an awesome answer to prayer that you guys have played a part in. So continue, if you would, to pray for Ken and uh, pray for Bob Newland. Think about Linda. And uh, and then also um, just thinking about uh, Ken and Wanda, that you'd be lifting them up. And uh, hey, guess what? We also prayed on Sunday for Sean Mateel. Sean came off life support yesterday and responded really well to it. Actually, he called me yesterday and we had a conversation, and uh, and he is doing much, much better, um, but has a long way to go. So if you would, continue to pray for Sean uh, Mateel. Troy Bradshaw is another one. Would you please pray for Troy? Lift Troy up before the Lord, and uh, just ask God to, to touch and intervene in his life. And then, um, obviously, we need to be praying for our nation. Um, we need to be praying for the election coming up. We need to be praying for... Uh, all the things that are happening in our country, um, the unrest, all the different things that are going on in our, not just our, in our nation, but around the world with COVID. And um, I know, again, this, this stuff is wearisome. It's burdensome, but Jesus said it, come to me and I'll give you rest. So again, thinking about follow, we want to go to him. How did Jesus handle it? Jesus handled it in prayer. He would pray all the time. We would see all these amazing times where he would go off by himself and spend time in prayer with his father, building that relationship with his father, but also pouring out his heart to the, to the father and relying on him for strength, relying on him for uh, direction. So right now, would you just take a moment and ask God to speak to your heart? Go ahead and do that right now. Father God, thank you so much for your great love for us. Thank you, Father, for my friends watching tonight online. Lord, I pray your blessing on their life. I pray, God, that you would just speak to them, that you would work in them, that you'd work through them, and God, that you would do great things. Lord, for these that we have mentioned, and even for those that we don't, God, you know the needs of every single heart. God, you know what's going on in our country. You know what's going on in our world. You know what's going on in our community, in our state. God, thank you that you are well aware of everything. Nothing slips by you. There isn't anything that catches you off guard or by surprise. So God, help us to trust you. Help us to lean on you. Help us, even as Jesus said, to come to him so that you might give us rest. Would you help us to do that? 
God, help us to, to find rest in you. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, so some things that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need some kind of highlighters. And they need to be blue, yellow, green, red. Okay, I know that's that looks pink. That looks pink. My wife says it's pink. It it's red to me, whatever. Um, but here's the deal. Each one of these represents a different thing that as we're looking at scripture, as we're thinking about the life of Jesus, we're going to be looking at specifically learning from four different things. Blue is for no, knowing the father, knowing characteristics of the father. Maybe it's even where in the new Testament, you see old Testament being quoted. Um, it's, it's really, again, the idea of knowing God. When I write, when I'm reading a passage and I read a verse and that speaks to me in the area of, man, this helps me to know God. Or I see the individual who, you know, see Jesus life. For example, when Jesus is in the temple and he is spending time in the temple doing asking questions, getting to know. And it says that he grew in his knowledge, he grew in wisdom, he grew in stature. Okay. That may be to you a no thing. Jesus grew in his wisdom and wisdom and understanding of, of who God is and who he is. So blue is for no. Yellow is for pray. So maybe as you're reading a passage, there's actually a lot of times when you're reading scripture, there is prayer right in the passage. You can highlight that. Um, and maybe it's something that you are like, you know what? I really need that as a prayer in my life. Um, I think about like when Mary uh, is is uh, her prayer in, in uh, the, the Gospels. And we see her praying and um, responding to God's call on her life. That's a prayer. And there's things about what she says and about what she feels that it's like, wow, I really need to pray that too. So I might highlight that in yellow. Red is for love, God's love. God's love toward us and our love toward other people. So again, think about Jesus' life. Um, he says, greater love has no man than this, that he laid out his life for another. That would be a great verse to highlight as red. Why? Because it's God's extravagant love for you and me. And not just his love for you and me, but also describes our love for other people. That we should be willing to lay down our lives for others. So red is for love. And then green is for live. Or a verse that, you know, I, I need to live this out in my life. I need to grow in this. And uh, again, thinking about different passages of scripture, um, uh, just thinking about where Jesus goes and spends time with his father in prayer. And, and I might highlight that as green because I need to live that out in my life. I need to go to God in prayer. Think about again, Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, these verses that we've been talking about on Sunday, come to me and I will give you rest. Likely, I would highlight that as green because that's something I need to live in my life. So again, blue, blue is for no, yellow is for pray, green is for, or I'm sorry, red is for love, and green is for live. All right, now I want you in the comment section, put what you think each one of those is. Again, just verb, ver, you know, get it out there, verbalize it to yourself. Blue is for, yellow is for, red is for, green is for. Now, here's the thing. Don't overthink this, okay? Give to you a passage of scripture to read, and I'm asking you to highlight it. There is not a right or wrong. 
Some of you are going to highlight some verses that you'll highlight as blue. I might highlight the exact same verses as green. So other people might highlight it as red. Other people as yellow. There's no wrong answer. It's you listening to the Holy Spirit of God as you're reading scripture and you highlight something that stands out to you. Stands out to you as, oh, I need to know God more in his character. That helps me to do that. I need to pray this in my life. I need prayer to be in my life more. I need to show God's extravagant love. That is God's extravagant love. I'm going to highlight in that in red. I need to live that out. I'm going to highlight that in green. Again, no wrong answer here. So whatever you put in there, um, whatever you use as highlight, that's fine. You don't have to highlight the entire passage. Um, you don't have to highlight every single verse. Um, what you're doing is just reading and letting God speak to you and then using the colors to, to be, again, something that just helps you to think through it. Back in the, uh, back in Bible times, they called this Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. The word Kavanaugh in Hebrew means to hit the bullseye. Well, what's the bullseye? What's the target? The target is a relationship with God. Hitting the bullseye, Kavanaugh, means that I am growing in my relationship with him. I'm getting to know him. I'm praying. I am extravagantly, I'm experiencing God's extravagant love. I'm showing God's extravagant love and I'm living it out in my life. Those four things are absolutely vital to being able to hit the bullseye or practice Kavanaugh in our lives. Now, what's interesting is that's an archery term. Do you know what the archery term is for missing the target? If you do know it, put it in the comments, would you? Just put it right there in the comments. What's the word that is in the original language that is for missing the target? And let's put it in English. And I'll give you a clue. It starts with S. It starts with S. All right, put it in the comments what you think. All right. That's right. The word is sin. They would yell sin if someone missed the target. When you and I don't strive to live for God, when we strive to live for on our own, we strive to do our own thing, we say no to God, we do our own selfish thing, our own selfish desires, guess what? It's sin. When we disobey God, we miss the target and we sin. So hitting the target, hitting the bullseye, Kavanaugh, is something that we want to be practicing in our lives. Something that we want to be, uh, you know, really taking hold of in our lives and letting the word of God speak to our hearts. So again, get yourself, it doesn't have to be highlighters. Um, it could be pencils. It could be crayons, whatever you want to use. But the colors are really important, all right? Blue for no. Yellow for pray. Red for love and green for live. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. Those things are important to have and to use um, as we give you guys assignments and as you uh, think about it. And that's one of the things about follow. There's going to be assignments. Okay. Um, this is not just me talk, you listen and no, it, it, you need to be yourself getting into the Word of God, okay? You need to be um, practicing this in your walk and in your day and in your time, whatever whatever that looks like for you, all right? So we've been looking at Matthew chapter 22, um, and tonight I'm going to use Matthew chapter 22, and, and I want, again, this is just practice. So verses 34 through 40, you read that and then you highlight what speaks to your heart. And again, doesn't have to be every single color. 
doesn't have to be every single verse. Don't overthink it. Just let the Holy Spirit of God guide you as you read this passage. All right. Now, as I read this passage, there's some things that, that number one, that sticks out to me is that I need to know God. And the way that I do that is by love. And so verse 37 for me, I might highlight that in blue. What verse would, what would you highlight? Maybe put that in the comments. What, what is something that you would highlight as a blue no or a yellow um, pray or red love or green live? So for me, I'm just sharing. I would probably highlight verse 37 as blue. Why? Because I need to know God like that. I need to love God like that. For some of you, you're like, oh, well, that, that sounds like a red thing to me. Okay, cool. It's obviously our love for God. Me, I'm. what speaks to me about loving is, is really verse 39. Um, love your neighbor as yourself. And so, um, to me, that's something that is, uh, again, a red. So, again, maybe just put in the comments, what is something that um, speaks to you when it comes to knowing God? What is something that speaks to you with prayer? Is there something in there that, that you're like, oh, I really need to pray this. This needs to be a prayer of my heart. Would you just put that in the comments for us? I'd love to be able to interact with you about that. And then um, we have red, God's love, and our love for others. And then green, live. For me, again, I could highlight almost all of this, at least verses 37 through 39, as live. Again, I, I need to live that out in my life. It's not enough just to go, okay, yes, I need to love God and I need to love people. I understand that. No, I need to live that out. And you know what? It's even it's becoming more and more a reality, isn't it? I mean, loving people. We're getting into a day and a time where where it is becoming more and more difficult to love people. And you know what that means? I gotta love God more. I gotta I've gotta I gotta really strive to to know Him more. And rely on him more because without that, oh my goodness, I'll never love people the way that God intends for me to love. So, um, again, what what is what's some things that are speaking to you? Would you share those in the comments? And then here's the other thing that I want to encourage you to do. So, assignment one um, is this: share it with somebody else. Maybe it's a loved one that you have there at home. Maybe you're watching this as a family. You guys can sit around and, and share this with each other. Do that. Romans 1.12 says, I want to encourage you in your faith, and I want to be encouraged in my faith by yours. So share this. Every opportunity you have, share what God is teaching you. And you know what's amazing to me? is that when we do that, he brings across our path people that need to hear it. And he brings across our path things that we need to hear from other people. That's why I want to encourage you in, in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged in my faith by yours. Another verse of scripture that goes along with that is Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen: As iron sharpens iron, so the countenance of one man sharpens another. One person sharpens another. So that's what follows about as well, is giving us opportunity to help each other grow in our faith. So I want to encourage you, share this. Share what you're learning. Share what's standing out to you. Share what, what's on your heart that God is laying there. Share that with somebody. Don't just hold it in for yourself. It's not meant to be held into yourself. Making disciples is about telling other people what God is doing in your life and encouraging them in their walk and in their faith. So that's that's assignment number one. And it'll always be the same. Share what God is speaking to you about. All right? So 
again, looking at this passage, Jesus obviously is challenging us. He's commanding us, love God, love people. You know, and he does that all throughout the Gospels, over and over and over again. Love God, love people. So, assignment number two, you need to read Luke chapter one through Luke chapter six. All right, Luke chapter one through Luke chapter six. That's your, that's assignment number two. Luke chapter one through Luke chapter six. And then use your highlighters, whatever you get. I got these off Amazon, by the way, for 10 bucks. Um, so, and they're non-bleed uh, and they, they act, they're excellent. I love them. They work really great. There's a ruler that comes with it. You know, in case you wanna be one of those people like me that doesn't make very good straight lines, it helps out big time, all right? So use that, practice Kavanaugh, hitting the bullseye by reading scripture and highlighting the verses that God speaks to your heart about, all right? Number three, <laughs> I almost went, <like>, number three. <laughs> number three, assignment number three is pray. What's something that we can be praying for you about? Would you just take a moment and put that in the comments? Please pray for me. Please pray this, whatever. If there's something you'd like us to be praying for, um, we as an online community um, can be praying for you. And uh, know that I will be praying for you. And I'd love, again, to interact with you on that. So if there's a prayer request that you have, would you, would you pray that? Would you put that in there as prayer? Here's something you can be praying for me about. I'm really excited about the next series. Um, I'm going to do a series of messages on the book of Amos. And uh, it's the subtitle is Let Justice Roll. It's really looking at biblical justice. What is biblical justice? We're living in a day and time where everybody's talking about social justice. And uh, there's so much going on in, in our culture and in our world that um, is, is just... Huh, messed up. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. It's just messed up. And it's evil. And we need to know how do we respond? What do we do? Now, this is not, this is not a, how do I say it? This is like a tip of the iceberg kind of thing. This is to get people thinking about it, to get people to, to, to interact with each other about it. I just, would you pray for me on that? I am... I just can be honest. I'm nervous about it. Um, I don't know that I've ever preached on um, this topic in particular, um, and uh, I'm I'm nervous about it. And part of that is because Satan is attacking me um, and planting untruths in my in my mind, and I'm really trying to do battle with that. So. Would you pray for me on that? I'd appreciate it um, very, very much. Um, and we need to be in prayer. We need to pray for our nation. Here at the church, we're going to spend some extended time praying for our nation. And um, I want to encourage you, when this video ends, to take some time and pray for our nation. If you're watching this together as a family or, or as a couple, um, or you're watching this with friends, would you just, would you pause, take some extra time, and just pray for our nation. Pray for our nation. Pray for the election coming up. Pray for um, the unrest that's happening in our nation. Pray for the church to be used by God. Can I, can I tell you something? I know a lot of people are saying, that the government's trying to, to suppress the church and the message of the church and, and all this. I just listened to a podcast yesterday where this guy who is, uh, uh, um, he's an expert 
in church growth and he's an expert in um does does much with like Barna and Tom Rainer and a lot of others who do a lot of research and stuff like that. And you know what's interesting? The church is actually having one of the greatest impacts it has ever had in our nation online. God is reaching people through online ministry. I hear it all the time. Pastors that I talk to where they have online, uh, where they're doing in person, but they also have online. They're like, I am reaching, we are reaching so many more people online. And you know why? I don't, I don't know why. God's using it. Satan intended for all this to be used for evil. And it, and it is. Let's just be honest, it is. But God intends it to be used for good. They say Easter Sunday was the most attended Easter Sunday. Not, not seats in a pew, but the most attended Easter Sunday in the history of the United States. Because there were so many people watching online. And the impact that that has had on lives, I can tell you that it has. I have talked to people. I just, I was just talking with someone today who was like, my mother-in-law has been watching us, our church online since March. And she never used to watch. She never even went to church. She, she didn't even interact with the church at all. But she has been watching faithfully every Sunday online. God is on the move. He is working. We need to be encouraged by that. I hope that encourages you. I hope that strengthens you. Yes, the ideal is that we get together and we're together. No, no question. That's the ideal. But can I tell you something? Just a little, just a little insight. We will be. For eternity. Yeah, that's right. You get to put up with me for eternity you're like oh man i'm done with this eh, pfft, i'm over it hey no this we can't forget this here this is a vapor right we're here today we don't know what's coming tomorrow but eternity is forever and we get to be forever together in the presence of Jesus, the church, together with all the saints of the Old Testament, with all those who've gone on before us, who put their faith and trust in Jesus, we get to be together for eternity. This is just a stopping off point. Let us not be discouraged. That does not mean, I am not saying at all, that that means that we shouldn't be meeting as a church. Don't hear that. <laughs> That's how you're interpreting this? You're you're not listening to me right. I'm telling you. Do I think that we need to be meeting as a church? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but, be encouraged. God is at work. And we can join him in that by prayer. All right? So, my friend, um, thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks for watching. I pray that you have a blessed, blessed evening. Let me just, can I pray for you right now? Let me do that. God, I pray for my dear friend watching tonight. Lord, be with them. Strengthen them. Encourage them. Help them as they grow in their faith. Thank you that we can mutually encourage each other and build one another up. Help us to spur one another on to love and good deeds, even all the more as we see the day approaching. God, you're good. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, as always... You know it. You are loved.